But at any rate, could you kind of address that? Yeah, I'll start us off, I guess. Um, I didn't really go into Italy with a budget, which was kind of a problem. I spent a lot more than I had planned on. Uh, good restaurants and shopping were my vices. <laughs> so, um, but you spend a lot more on traveling than you would realize and expect. So definitely budget your traveling accordingly, because a lot of times when you get a good deal on a discount airline, you have to take a bus into town, which costs an extra you know, 15 euro each way, so things really start to add up. And I'd say the best advice at the beginning of the year is on your nights when you don't have dinner at the pensione, don't go out to like restaurants all the time because it's definitely a lot better to break it up and um, choose kind of when and where you eat out. Um, just to add to that, I had a little bit of a budget. I had my starting number when I left, and I knew what I wanted my bank account to be at when I got home, since I was only there for the semester. And it was a little bit less than I would have liked, but also just, it's all up to you, and just make sure, like, when you're coming back from the airport, like, my pensione was really far away from the train station, so I would always have to take a taxi back, because it was a longer walk to come back, because the, the airport has buses. So also, again, plan for having to pay to get yourself from the airport to a hostel or from the Florence airport to um, your pensione again at the end of the weekend. Mm -hmm. I would also say do some research with your banks and find out if they have any partners or relationships with any international banks because that can really cut down your costs when you take out money. Um, I forget what bank had um, some type of contract with the German Deutsche Bank and there's one in Florence so my friends who got money out there they didn't pay as much of a fee so that definitely also adds up when you take out money. So I would think about that. And also be a little bit more realistic about how you're gonna spend. I know when I sat there, I was kind of a little put off and people were like, don't try to budget too much. You're gonna spend money, deal with it. And I was like, but I don't have that much to spend. I would budget it really tightly on my two city, just how much I was gonna eat, um, the transportation, the hostel, and that was it. But when you go to the city, you really wanna experience all it has to offer. So do be, do be a little bit generous with yourself in that way. You don't wanna travel so far and get there and just kind of like sit in the park and not be able to go to museums, because they usually do cost about you know, 10 or 20 euros or something. So do also kind of be lenient and just take advantage of everything you have there. Okay, um, when I went over in the fall 2010 is when I decided I wanted to stay for the whole year, and I hadn't budgeted for that, so towards the end of the first <coughs> semester I ran out of money, and the second semester was primarily funded by my parents, so if any of you are considering, is everybody here for the year They're already? Fall. Fall in year, okay, so if anybody here is a fall student, I would, and you're considering the year, I would try to budget for that because I will help you a lot. And I learned over there, as everybody's kind of mentioned already, most of your money will go to food and to travel. So I didn't allow myself as much for shopping, but I think that was worth it for me. But if you like to, you know, there's a lot over there, markets and stuff like that. So plan on spending a lot for food and travel. And just like um, Ellen was saying, when you get there, you want to be able to enjoy it. So a lot of money you'll be paying for museum tickets and bus tickets and train, things like that. So a lot of it will go to travel and food. Kind of going off of what Ellen said earlier, um, check into the bank partners. That was really helpful for me. Um, but a lot of times that works like with, it, like going back to the Deutsche Bank thing, I won't talk about this too much, but they like, it was only in Germany where the ATM fees were like, like that. So just ask your bank, figure that out. Um, make sure you have a credit card with a good limit on it because that's how you will be booking like plane tickets, Ryanair, everything like that. Make sure that um, you don't have something that's really low. and budget for emergencies in that too, like the, with the credit card limit. Um, if it helps going on, on, a, on a card with your parents, um, that's what I did and it was really helpful because my credit score wasn't good enough for that. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I spent most of my money on food and I mean, when I would go places with people or like abroad um, on the weekends and everything, we would, uh, we would end up saying like, okay, we can only go to one museum this trip, Aaron. So, okay, pick pick your museum. Like, we'll go out to dinner one once this weekend, and 
everything else would kind of be we're going to find the grocery store and going to get sandwiches and cheese or you know that kind of thing, um, which actually ends up saving a ton of money even on the weekends when you're in Florence and just want to um, eat cheap and not at Pensione. That the grocery stores are key. Going along with the credit card, definitely um, that's where I kind of got stuck. I was there for the year, and so first semester I kind of had a lower limit. And especially when you're booking plane tickets and stuff like that, um, I kind of got stuck. So I actually went home for Christmas, and so um, I sat down with my parents and we kind of discussed upping the limit so it was more um, comfortable just in case for emergencies and stuff, because um, that can happen sometimes. And budgeting for trips, um, I didn't have really a budget that I kind of knew of my number, but I had some trips planned in mind, but then, so I kind of had an idea of that, but also there's some weekends where you kind of don't know you're going on a trip until that week, and so keep that in mind if um, you're up for spontaneous trips, so mm -hmm. that that as well. Okay, thank you. I do want to remind you, and I think Jill brought it up, that you do need to notify your bank that you're going to be traveling. Do it like a week or two ahead of time. Because if you don't tell the bank that you're going out of country and you try to use the ATM machine when you get there, it won't, <coughs> it possibly will not work. <laughs> so you need to tell them that you're not going to only be in Italy, but you're going to be traveling throughout Western <coughs> Europe so that they'll know when those charges start coming in. And that partner bank is, is key, um, especially I know in Florence, if you're a B of A Bank of America, um, I know there are partner banks over there, our uh, Shelly Story. She says she doesn't get any charges of any of her fees, so, and those really do add up. So check around, you know, just don't go with your bank. Check around and see what might work for you. The other thing is having some um, Italian cash on hand. Um, you can get uh, money when you arrive in the airport using your ATM, uh, AT using the ATM machines, or they have Thomas Cook there. The machines are going to be a lot cheaper. Um, but it's a good idea to start out here with some money so you don't have to have all that disorienting stuff going on when you first arrive. It's all already confusing. So we would say, you know, maybe the equivalent of about $200 U.S. Um, and then you can play around with the money and figure out how to, to, to handle it um, and what it means. Um, also, <clears throat> um, it might be a good idea to have you know, these Visa cards that you can buy that you can preload with an amount of money as a backup in case your card gets eaten by the ATM machine and you're left without, you're kind of like stranded. That happens almost every year to somebody. So if you have a, a little backup money, maybe a few hundred dollars on a, one of those cards that you can just buy from the, the store that you load up with some cash. Good question. So they're all saying credit cards. Debit in credit or oh, yeah. yeah. But you do want to check with your bank, as I mentioned, <clears throat> what their transaction fees are going to be. Credit unions tend not to charge as much as regular banks do. So that's good to know. Let's talk about trips. You're going to be getting a, um, information about the organized trips coming up, and you'll have to commit to those if you want to go on them early on and pay ahead for them. But you might choose to do some group travel as well. If you don't get on a trip and it becomes filled up, don't worry too much about it because some people just sign up for everything. And then when they get there, decide, oh, well, I really don't want that trip. I want to go off with my friends to some other destination. So you can, you can probably get on a trip that you haven't signed up for uh, here at the time it's offered. Do you want to talk about a, your, your travel plans and um, whether you went on group or independent trips? Okay, so I went on two of the Gonzaga sponsor trips. I went to Paris and then I went to Scotland for Thanksgiving. Um, and then the other trips I did, if your parents are coming to visit, that's always nice if you use your bank account and I <laughs> um, But I also did Bust Alps a lot. Um, that was just the company that I guess my semester chose to travel with quite a bit. Um, but everyone usually went to the same places if it was through different companies. There was a weekend where there were probably almost a hundred of us in the Amalfi Coast, but it was through Florence Rickline, Best Alps, and Euro Adventures. 
Um, and then I did one trip by myself. I went to stay with family friends in Switzerland, um, but also planned to stay in Florence. That was what one person told me um, last year when I was sitting here, is they're like, don't get to the end of the semester and regret not spending enough time in Florence. I did about every other weekend traveling to different places, and then I also spent a weekend in Florence just to explore the city that you're living in. Because, like it or not, you are going to have some homework to do. So. <laughs> Going abroad to Florence was my first time leaving the country, so I was really apprehensive of traveling and planning trips on my own. So the first semester, I went mostly with school trips, which really made me look more comfortable. But my second semester, everyone is extremely familiar with HostelWorld.com, and you're constantly getting the emails about the deals coming up, and especially with um, Ryanair, they have a lot of cheap deals, like maybe like two weeks before, like a 10-year-old flight to Dublin, and they're like, okay, let's go. And so after a while, it really becomes like a breeze. It's not anything to worry about at all, traveling. But um, I did see something about there, like uh, for independent travel. I didn't really know too many students that went to many places by themselves. I know John did. But um, mostly, it's really easy to find a group of people to go together. Because like, everyone kind of hits the big things like Barcelona and Amsterdam and all those kind of cities. So I really wouldn't worry too hard about not finding people that you can go with. I, what that meant was just you forming your own group yeah. rather than the organized I, program. Yeah, I mean, hostels seemed really sketchy to me at first, but <laughs> definitely it's nothing to be worried about. Some kind of like the best times I've had is meeting other students who are studying abroad in hostels, like meeting friends that were from Germany but studying in Paris and that kind of thing. So it was really awesome. Uh, I would say definitely uh, take advantage of your time in Florence. Uh, what I did is I the first semester since I was there for the year, I spent a lot of time and toured around Tuscany and things like that and I went on two school sponsored trips and then the spring I went on a lot more trips, um, some school sponsored, some on my own. But definitely if you want, take the opportunity to travel alone. I did it a few times and it was some of the best times ever. You really get to do exactly what you want when you want and you meet some amazing people. I know I traveled to Sicily by myself and I ended up touring all of Sicily with, it was me, two Italian guys, three Swedish girls, a Brazilian and an Iranian kid. And we were the most awkward group of people together, but we had so much fun and like went to dinner all the time. So you really get to meet some interesting people that you wouldn't meet from your group otherwise. And I'd say definitely do some school trips as well because you get to do a lot of things like tours that you wouldn't normally pay for on your own but are incredible. Like we did a Scottish Highlands tour that was absolutely amazing and in Budapest we did a really cool tour of um, like the communist statues park so it's something that I wouldn't have found on my own so take advantage of all those opportunities. I am a huge advocate for all of the school sponsored trips. I went on all of them except for one and I went on a different one than the Munich trip that they offered because I did a year adventures to Amalfi Coast kind of like Aaron was talking about and what I love about all of the school trips is that they know everything about them. You pay the money and you get to pick your roommates on the weekend, which is really fun. And they do everything for you. They know the best places to see, the tour guides. Sometimes they'll take you out for a fun activity or a dinner. So I absolutely love those. And I encourage you all, if you're interested, to sign up for those. And just like Wanda was saying, if you get there and you choose that you don't want to go, something else comes up, you can just have somebody else buy your spot on that trip. I did one trip to Milan with a friend, we planned it ourselves, and that was an interesting experience, but the thing about planning your own travel is you realize just how hard it is and how much effort and time it takes to plan the transportation and the budget, what you're going to do there, the restaurants, so I would highly encourage you all to go on the school trips because they plan it all for you and you get to see the best sites and have the great tour guides. I'm actually going to disagree with that. I really <laughs> liked doing all of the independent travel. Um, I felt I did, outside of opening tour, only one trip with the school, which was to Budapest. And I mean, that was a really good trip, but I felt like that independent travel and going with a group of three or four was really a better way for me to immerse myself and like actually walk around, not in a group of 100 people. Um, so I thought that was like, that was my personal preference. Um, and also, um, it's really important when you do the independent travel, don't try and coordinate 20 some odd people in a group because I saw so many trips that could have been so fun just crash and burn because a lot of people were trying to 
accommodate everybody what they're trying to do. So groups of like three or four to six or something um, were really nice and that way you can get yourself a hostel room and just fill it up with all of your stuff and make sure the door is locked. Um, and so I thought, I thought that kind of travel was great and I always thought that finding your own restaurants and, and um, finding your own tour guides, free hostel tours, um, just organized by them, meeting people in your own hostel, um, was a great way to like really find out more about the city that you're staying in. Um, and then for like the weekends that you are staying in Florence, which inevitably happens, um, Tuscany is the best place to be because everything is a train right away. You can go to Siena, you can go to San Gimignano, and so all the weekends that I did stay in Florence, we tried to take a day trip to one of those because it just ended up making you feel like you did do something that weekend and you didn't, not, I don't want to say waste a weekend because you are still in Florence, but um, you can tour Florence on during the week or something like that and make sure you know like, you know, the area that you're staying in beyond the city. Um, yeah. Um, for me, I kind of did a mix of everything. I did, I believe, three school trips to Paris, uh, Budapest and southern France and then I also did a lot of group travel both with Euro Adventures and just with groups of friends and I kind of liked I liked the school trips for what they were as um, the rest of us have been saying you know they kind of know they laid out for you and stuff that you might necessarily not know otherwise but then too with like your independent groups and like with your friends you can kind of explore and kind of find stuff on your own, which is also a good thing to do. So it's just up to you and be open to different things that you might not necessarily think before. Okay, just in the interest of time, we're not going to ask each panel member to address each topic, but you okay. can raise your hand if you feel you have something important to add. I have one that. more thing to add about trips. Um, it's totally okay <coughs> to come to Florence with a non-negotiable place that you want to go. Mine was Dublin. And I said, and a lot of people were like trying to figure out when they wanted to go, and if it didn't work for me, I was like, this is the weekend that I want to go, like, I'm going to go, I'm going to find someone who, who wants to go with me, and it's going to be great. Because you're there to have an experience, and every experience is going to be individual, and you're also there to travel so many different places. And so, like, don't compromise on something that's super important to you that you really want to experience, because you want to go with, like, a big group of people. Like, if there's somewhere that you've been dying to go, go. You will find someone who will go with you, trust me. Or go by yourself. Yeah, or go by yourself. Like, Dublin's safe. Everyone speaks English, so <laughs> they're really friendly. <laughs> okay. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the safety issue related to travel and what you can encounter. And especially it seems like the farther south you go, well, even in Paris you may um, be confronted with people begging and trying to get your stuff, your camera, your money, your computer, whatever. Um, and uh, one thing that will happen sometimes, especially like in train stations, you'll see, and I hate to be discriminating, but I, I just have to say this. Sometimes there's groups of gypsies, they'll have a baby, or what appears to be a baby, <laughs> and they'll do various things, such as throw the baby at you. Why? Because you have a camera and they want it. You're going to drop your camera and grab their baby. And I, I've been written up in the newspaper for saying this, but let that baby drop. <laughs> that is not a, probably a real baby if they're going to throw it. If the mother, a mother would not throw her baby. If it is a real baby, she's got it tied to her arm uh, or something. She's not going to let her baby drop, but do not drop your camera. They can come up with a newspaper and kind of put it in your face. Did any of you experience any of this kind of thing? Yeah, I mean, there's definitely like one piazza where they kind of congregate at night. And so if you're walking home from like the bars or the club, you just kind of know that if you walk through that piazza, because it's kind of a shortcut, that you will walk into them. But I never had any per Did you? What's the name of the piazza? Oh, um, Santissima Sant Piazza. It's like to the left of the school, and we just kind of joke around called Gypsy Square, <laughs> and that's just kind of where they tend to congregate. To be honest, though, I felt safer sometimes at Florence at night than I had in Spokane walking around. <laughs> I, was, uh, campus I don't want to be contrary and make you yeah. not aware yeah. or alert, 
But since it is a pretty small city and you walk around all the time, you definitely start to feel very comfortable um, walking around. Um, for me, I've been sometimes, not very smartly, but walked around by myself late at night, and I never had any problems. Just kind of be smart, don't smile. That's something you have to learn as like a girl. Don't smile. Like, you have to fight it, but don't. And yeah, but I never really had problems. The mini belt, I only wore going to Barcelona because I heard that's where it was like the worst. But I never wore it anywhere else traveling, and I never had any problems. It was just kind of be smart, kept my purse to myself. But I never had any issues with anyone trying to steal something or always having a money belt on me. I really just never used it, so I actually felt pretty safe. Just be smart. Do you have any incident? Any incident? Like Somebody trying to get your money or stuff? Um, well, I had a friend who went to a club in Barcelona and was not very intelligent and took his original social security card with him. And that was stolen along with his entire wallet with all of the euro that he had allotted for the weekend. So just, I mean, don't do that. Girls get a purse with a zipper. Um, if it's like a side bag or something, you can, yeah, like this kind of thing. And you can buy those in like the Mercado, they're great. Um, but like then you feel the zipper unzipping or something if somebody's trying to get at you. If you're traveling in the train station, you have a lot of bags, just be really conscious. I had a friend whose iPod was taken when she was napping on her train on a train, um, and like the iP she had her headphones in and everything like that. They just all of a sudden the music stopped because somebody just took it. Um, don't bring your laptops on weekend trips. You won't need them. That's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want to add about the laptop. We had. Um, a student stayed at a youth hostel and they checked their laptop in at the, the desk and um, somebody in the room, uh, not a guest, was observing when the student gave them their name and room number to put with the computer and after a while they came up to the desk and said, well I'm the friend of X and I want to pick up her computer for her. So that's how things happen there. Yeah, as far as like going out at night or traveling, what I would do, well, for guys, I just um, carry like this type of wallet. This is all you need. And when I go out at night, all I bring is my international student ID card and like 20 euro, however much I'm going to need for the night. Because I had a friend who was robbing me, got his wallet stolen um, out, of, out of his front pocket, and he lost all of his credit cards and everything, and it's a big pain. So when you go out or are traveling, just bring enough money that you really need with you and maybe one debit card, then keep a spare somewhere else. But I, especially going out in Florence, don't bring any credit or debit cards because it will just either get stolen or you're spending too much at the bars, so. <laughs> um, oh, uh, also, uh, the pensiones that you live in, um, the whole building is not just your pensione with Gonzaga students. Usually what happens is you have like a floor of only Gonzaga students, and sometimes they're like privately owned by families, other times they're other hotels. Um, in my pensione, one student, she was just running upstairs to get something because it was four or five flights of stairs. She left her backpack with her laptop at the bottom, thinking, well, it's not on the street because you have like, a door to get inside the building. Ran upstairs, came back, and it was gone. So you just also be conscious of your pensione that like, once you're inside your actual floor, you're safe, it's fine. They have like a security person that watches it, but also just be careful of that. Um, just a quick incident story. In Paris, they have these people who are coming up to you asking you to sign things. Don't. <laughs> and one time they were in Starbucks, this is what happened to my roommate, they were in Starbucks and she kept slapping it down on the table and then what they were actually doing was sliding her iPhone and kept sliding it and then someone on the table finally realized just as she was about to take the iPhone, she was stealing the iPhone. And luckily her iPhone didn't get stolen, but like for all those people, like literally, like, if they're getting too close to you, like physically put your hand up and tell them no. And like a lot of the times, if you're in a business like Starbucks, the people who work there are gonna come yell at them. But like, be aware of your surroundings. Like if some, yeah, that was just an incident story. So, you also <clears throat> want to be careful when you're using the ATM machines that nobody is watching you. And can you talk about that? Anybody? Um, I mean, I stay in Hotel Meridiana. I don't know if that's going to be your guys' year. It was where the place was started, and we had um, an ATM on the street. What you need to do is you need to make sure that you're with a friend and your friend is standing behind you so nobody else can get closer than that, but also, like, hover yourself over the entire ATM and, like, don't, don't just stand there and, like, enter in your pin. Like, you need to, like, be over it. Like, don't let anybody see, like, where the numbers are going. It's just... 
you just got to guard everything really carefully. Did you have a question up there? Yeah, when you don't take all of your money and your passports and credit cards with you, where are you keeping these things in your room? Do you, is there a safe? Are you carrying a traveling with a safe? Or what do you do with it? At home, um, like we would normally, well, I say in the home safe, in the pensione, it's safe in the pensione. There's a security guard, and it's you can lock your so doors. It's safe in your room. Yes, oh, it's safe in your room. Safe in your room. And then when uh, you travel to hostels, pretty much every hostel has a locker. So bring your own type of lock, like get a little lock that you can use, so you can lock up your things at home. And that's the really the best thing to do. Now, if your <clears throat> ATM card does get stolen, lost or stolen. Hopefully you have that photocopy. You need to notify the bank right away that you're missing your card, and the, and then um, kind of keep track of how where you've used it. If you've gone to a store and spent money, used your card to buy something with, keep track of that. Keep the receipts so that you can prove what your last purchase was during that trip, how many things you bought. If you use your card that way, um, because there is insurance on those cards. And usually you don't have to get burdened with a whole lot of, of uh, somebody else's spending if you turn it in and, and you know what you've done. So, I want to say something really quick about the ATMs. Um, I felt pretty good in Western Europe about the ATMs, but I took a weekend in Morocco, um, which now I would not recommend in Africa. But um, there was, I was in an ATM in like a main square and I entered all my information in. There was this little kid standing right next to me and I was taking out a significant amount of money to reduce the fee. And as soon as I, the money pops out of the little thing and I grab it really quickly, he like stuck his hand out and was just trying to take the money. So watch out for little kids too yeah. because crime is not just limited to adults. Hmm. Uh, let's talk about life in Florence. We kind of uh, talked a little bit about pensiones, but how, we want to talk about staying in touch, the facilities, the student life staff and services, housing, pensione meals, that kind of thing. So um, just staying in touch, did you use <coughs> Skype? Uh, how did you communicate with your families and friends? I use Skype, which is really convenient because you can get, you just put like $10 in and then that did last me a pretty long time. Um, some people get international plans for your cell phones. Or you can get cell phones that are from like the 80s for really cheap in Florence. <laughs> I didn't have a phone the whole year and I've never had a problem. We would just communicate via Facebook because we always be like either at school or at you know, your pensione. So just you had to be a little bit more accountable. So if you're going to meet someone at like 9 p.m., you were going to be there at 9 p.m. It just made you more accountable. But I didn't have a phone the whole year and I actually really liked it. It was a nice change. And so as long as you're Skyping with your parents and stuff, it's really not a problem at all. Um, you can, if you need to, um, use sometimes the pensioners let you use their phone if you have an emergency phone call home that you want to make sure it goes through. But like I did Skype interviews for even jobs here back on campus when I was in Florence, so it's not a problem at all. When you first get there in Berlin, I'm talking about, um, if you don't have a phone to call home yourself, the staff will let you use their phone. And we recommend that. It's something, your parents are anxious. They want to know that you made it. Uh, we get frequent calls about that or emails saying, did my student arrive? Um, and just to relieve the tension here at home, <laughs> make the effort to, to communicate that you arrived and you're there. So, uh, any other uh, contributions to the uh, well, yeah, okay. okay. Uh, well, I also use Skype. And I had a blog while I was over there, so I would update that on my travels so my family knew what I was up to. I'd send emails, I wrote postcards. Um, so I also didn't have a phone while I was over there, and I really liked that because you don't really need it, and you're always around the friends or the people that you need to meet up with, or you just start more specific about your communications, about when you meet somebody and where and whatnot. And in terms of, <laughs> like family life at the, at, with the GIF staff and pensione. I wasn't homesick at all, and I loved that because um, I just felt at home once I got there. I had an amazing pensione family. It was in Galadoro, which is the best pensione ever, so you will feel at home, and if you're ever <laughs> feeling homesick, um, I'm, you have such an amazing staff. Shelly and Linda are there. You could talk to your friends because I guarantee you that if you are feeling homesick, somebody else is feeling homesick too, and it will go away quickly, I promise. 
Okay, so I will talk about the other end. I had a phone. I brought my BlackBerry so I could BBM with people who, I guess, still have Blackberries, um, <laughs> which is not a lot of people anymore. Um, and it was great because I could email, I BBM'd with my boyfriend, my mom, my best friend, and my brother. And then I emailed with my dad via phone. If you have an iTouch, that's also a great way to communicate. Just download something like Kick Messenger or something like that, and then get your friends at home who have their smartphones to do that. Really simple. Um, and I really liked having a phone because I will say that I was terribly homesick most of the time, um, but I had extenuating circumstances. Um, my boyfriend ended up being very sick most of the semester, so I was not, my mind was elsewhere. But this is what someone said to us last year on the panel, if you are feeling homesick, go outside and take a walk. Because I guarantee you, once you step outside the door of your room, you're going to be like, what am I doing like sitting here in my room, like wallowing in the fact that I'm not in Spokane, which you should not be doing ever. <laughs> but, <laughs> but just go outside, take a walk. You're in this beautiful city, and you have so much to take in. And honestly, like they said, talk to someone because I guarantee somebody else is going to be feeling the same way as you and then when you figure out that you're not the only person feeling that way it's you feel immediately better mm -hmm. and don't be afraid to just like sit down with somebody that you know and be like I am so homesick right now and just kind of like let it out because like when I got to Berlin my phone was not working I was so tired so if you are bringing a phone like I have Verizon um, and, you, and say you've gotten like updates on your phone, like you've gotten upgrades, stuff like that, make sure they have the right SIM card number and everything before you leave, because that was a hassle and it was stressful. But like if you're feeling homesick, especially when you first get there, like all of the staff are gonna be amazing. They're like, just use my phone, just call home, it's great. And I guess I'm the only person here who knows James and Victoria. They are new over there as of last semester and they're super fabulous. And then, of course, Shelly, Linda, and Federica are always there for you, and they're going to make sure that you have like, the best time ever. Um, just a quick note about the homesickness thing. I don't know that I felt homesick ever, um, but one of the things that I realized that a lot of people were kind of trying to articulate too is that you're all psyched up when you get there, and, and then you have to at some point realize that not every second of every day of the entire year or semester that you're there is going to be fun like you have homework you have to go to classes like you'll have things that you need to do um, so kind of coming to terms with the fact that not every single moment is going to be like epic you need to write home about it um, that was the kind of I guess homesickness equivalent that I saw more than that. <coughs> I want to talk a little bit about the campus facilities. As I mentioned earlier, it's a it's a building that Gonzaga owns, and <clears throat> pardon me, it has a library. Uh, we're pretty proud of it. It's one of the larger libraries in study abroad, over 10,000 volumes, um, and there's a computer lab with probably around 20 computers. The building itself is wireless. Um, we have a fitness room. I'm not too sure how that came down, but. <laughs> um, <laughs> And then a very small chapel, and um, there's usually um, a spiritual guide there. Last year it was a couple who came. This year, the part of the year we had a priest, and next year we think we're going to have uh, uh, somebody from Seattle University that might join the the group, but not not as a priest. I think it's a uh, minister. minister, camp's minister. Um, so. Um, I imagine all of you are going to bring computers. Did you, and the, and the pensiones are supposedly wireless, I said supposedly wireless, so did you, any of you have any issues with getting your computer to work? Oh yes. <laughs> the wireless internet in Italy, um, our, most of our servers were called Alice or lovingly Alice, and she was very stubborn and often would not work, so, not often, but it was very, it was a lot slower than we're used to here, um, not as fast. Um, usually pensiones tried really hard to fix anything if we had any problems. Um, I was nice, I lived in Hotel Colorado, so it was close enough where I could move off the school's wireless. But um, the school computers are also a little slower, just to kind of give you a heads up. It's not going to be as fast as it is here, but it will essentially do the job. And the library is really nice. I would recommend um, 
going for a job there, you get 10 bucks an hour, and it's only about like seven to 10 hours a week, so it's a nice way to kind of supplement your income and maybe pay for the food that weekend, so really put that out there too. Okay. Uh, we're going to, we, apparently the room is booked at 3.30. I thought we had it reserved till four. Wanda, can we just have John talk about yeah. um, homestays? Sure, real quick, homestays. Okay. Homestay. Is there anyone that's considering doing a homestay? Okay, few of you, you should definitely do it. It was the greatest experience of my life. I cannot emphasize that enough. Um, I did it for the whole year, and I had a little bit of Italian background, which helped, but when I first got there, I was really nervous, but my family was so like loving and welcoming, they really became like my actual family. Um, we ate dinner with them every night, they took us on like vacations with them, like you were a part of the family, and they, um, I just don't even know what to say about them, they were absolutely incredible. It's an incredible experience to kind of get away from Zaga and Florence, because sometimes you kind of get caught in the American bubble, you really get immersed in the culture, like see what it's about. Uh, talk about things that are going on in the world in Italy at that time. And so it's a really great experience. I mean, I had a, uh, mine was a little different homestay though. I had a host mom, a host dad. Then they had three daughters, nine, 14, 17. Then there were 11 international students that lived there. So it was almost like a pensione to itself, but it was still like a family environment. And it was really neat because we lived with like four Colombian girls the first semester. So we got an aspect of that culture sometimes. So. It was a great experience and you should consider doing it even if you don't have a lot of Italian experience because you learn it very fast. And even if you don't know like how to speak it very well, you begin to understand it and when you're using it a lot of times because otherwise you'll just be speaking English to your friends all the time and you'll really miss out on an important part of Gonzaga and Florence. So if anyone wants to talk about homestays after, I can share a lot of stories. Mm -hmm. So feel free to come up to me. Well, the Italian government requires you to show evidence of $4,000 for a semester. Of just money in an account? Yeah, mm -hmm. either your financial aid package or your parents' bank account, your bank account, a com combination of funds that has to show that amount. That doesn't mean that you have to have that in the bank <laughs> the day after you report it. But actually, it's going to cost you all of that and more probably, depending on how much independent travel that you do. Um, you know, if you're staying more in Italy and, and in Florence in particular, then you can navigate on a lower amount of money. But just very quickly, could you, if you know, would you mind sharing how much? Yeah, I spent a year there and I traveled a lot and spent a lot of money on some certain things. Like sometimes I had $100 dinners, so I didn't really go to budget. It wasn't often, but once in a while you gotta, with the food's that good. But um, I budgeted. Um, for my entire year, then I stayed actually a month after we got out of school and traveled on my own, so that was extra expense. But I spent about eleven thousand dollars, and that was that included the Christmas tour too, which was um, four thousand. Four thousand. So, but that was really worth it. But it's um, it's definitely somewhat expensive, but you find the money from somewhere, and it's yeah. I was on the way opposite extreme of that. Um, especially since I was working, it kind of kept me from going on some weekends because we had the library open during. But I spent, I think if I was going to go somewhere like out of the country, like Barcelona or Paris, we could estimate you're going to spend around 300 euro for like if you're leaving Italy, if you counted everything such yeah. as your flight, your hostels, your basic food. So you could estimate like around 300 euro for those bigger trips. And if you're doing day trips within Italy, it'd be a little cheaper, obviously. So I did um, one out of Italy trip a month. And the rest of the time I stayed in Italy, so I kind of budgeted to be around at two to three thousand dollars. Granted, it kind of fluctuates depending on the yep. ratio of the euro conversion rate. But yeah, I kept it between two to three thousand dollars a semester. And I didn't go as many places as other people did, like John, but I got to know Italy really, really well. Like I went down south a lot, where a lot of things are cheaper, like the food and everything. And because especially because if you're for the year, you're during off peak day, um, seasons, so the hostels are a lot cheaper. And so it's doable to do a little cheaper. A lot of things are covered in the binder that we're going to give you. So I just want to ask quickly, raise your hand if you think you have the best pensione. <laughs> That's usually how it goes. <laughs> they, the students end up loving.
their pensione, loving the people that operate it. They feel secure, well fed, and um, really at home there. So, in the short of things here, um, tap light. Usually, people take way too much. And, yeah. Um, I want to throw in a quick thing about the housing lottery. Um, guys, not going to be a problem. Girls, I didn't know who I was living with until 30 seconds before housing started. Like, I had gotten dropped a couple times and it was stressful, but like, I talked to a couple people and they're like, oh, Georgia needs a roommate. And I go to her, I'm like, Georgia, please, can I live with you? Because she also already knew where she was living because she is like allergic to dairy, so we ended up being in the vegan dorm. Um, so really, don't worry about housing. All the guys were so excited to watch girls' housing go down, and <laughs> it was there were no tears, there was no fights. It was great. So like, say you guys are in a group of four or six or something like that. Make sure you know who's like where you're gonna split up. Like if your first option gets taken, okay, split up into the second option. Like. Make sure you know that before so you're not like having a fight like during housing. That's like my only real advice, but also I'm best friends with my roommate now. Like it was awesome, so like don't worry about it too much. But come with plan. Mm -hmm. Any words to the wise on packing? I think the pe next people are waiting in line here to get in. Well, we're happy to come in, but we are not all going to stay if you're so inclined. We're just going to put the women's game on against Kentucky. For packing light, I wouldn't worry too much. I kind of came on the opposite spectrum where I didn't pack anything, and then I went home for Christmas and brought a lot back. And the only problem was that after the school year, I went to travel throughout Europe a little bit more, and the baggage fees for traveling on Europe are insane. You want to have like one bag that could be your carry-on baggage, because so that's where they get you. The flight will be five euro, but if you don't print out your ticket, that's a 20 euro charge. If your bag's overweight, it's another like 30, 40 euro charge. So that's kind of how I like to sneak it on you. Um, don't worry, just dress kind of like how you normally dress here, just a little bit more conservatively. Scarves and boots are always really safe, but I wouldn't stress too much about what to pack, what not to pack. They have most of the stuff you need there for girls, like um, hygiene-wise, so I wouldn't worry. It's pretty much similar. Just real quick, definitely go on the website, it's called Ryanair, and check their baggage restrictions because you're going to be flying them a lot. And then bring with you, I just brought a, a small backpack, I packed it empty in the bottom of my suitcase, and that's what you travel with every weekend, that's all you really need. And if it's any bigger than their baggage restriction, you're going to get charged like 30 euro each way. So go on to Ryanair.com and check out their baggage restrictions to save a lot of money that way. And um, I never, some people use sleeping bags for hostels. You can get like little silk liner bags for $20 on eBay or something that work pretty well. Um, a little thing of advice for packing. Um, kind of figure out like when the time comes to come home, like don't overpack going over there because you'll, you'll buy things and souvenirs and stuff for family and friends and yourself. Um, and with me, I went home for Christmas, so I brought stuff, you know, souvenirs for that. And then I kind of, that emptiness that I brought, I brought more stuff back with me. And then I ended up having to check a third bag in, and I took Lufthansa coming back. And I believe my extra, yeah, extra baggage fee is around 250 euro. So kind of have that in mind, just to check in. I mean, some, some students, they <coughs> ship stuff coming back. Um, and that can be expensive too, but just kind of keep that in mind um, when you back. Uh, we have people obviously waiting for us. Donna is going to email you yep. the yep. visa meeting information. Yeah, sorry for my back. I just want to tell you one thing, and this is directed at mom and dad. If they are planning a um, you know, family reunion before you go outside of the country, say you're going to Canada, just know that your passport may not be available for up to 90 days before departure. So um, that's, that's what we need to know before we see you on the 4th. So.